Hey there, it's Lara here. Welcome to Witchy Wednesday for the week of October 10th to 16th, 2018. As always, thanks for being here. I really do appreciate it. Um, if this is your first time to the channel, then I hope you stick around and I hope you subscribe if you haven't yet. Um, this week, I was thinking about what to talk about in the video and I thought, you know, there's no, there's no full moon happening. There's no new moon happening. We just had a new moon that I spoke about in last week's video, new moon in Libra, which we're still feeling, um, we're still in that energy right now of the new moon in Libra. And that happened on Monday. Um, but we have, you know, none of that going on between today, the 10th, and then next Wednesday, when the next video will come out. And we have no planets that are changing signs. Um, we just had Mercury move into Scorpio yesterday from um, Libra. So, and I'm going to touch on that in conjunction with the other stuff that I'm going to talk to you about. So anyway, I was looking at the chart and I was like, hmm, something really... <laughs> When I looked at it, you know, jumped out at me and I thought, yeah, well, that's definitely the focus for this week. Um, and that is largely about all of the Scorpio energy that we are experiencing right now. Um, I've, you know, I've talked about this in past videos a little bit, but I'm going to dive deeper into that today and I'm going to... Dive deeper into Venus retrograde in Scorpio because although I've touched on it briefly in videos over the past few weeks, um, you know, I haven't really gone into detail and um, I haven't talked about that through the signs. And so what I'm going to do today for each of the signs is um, speak to that area of your chart that Scorpio falls for you because there's a lot going on there right now and it's been a theme for for this year and as I as I you know sort of unpack this a little bit for us you'll see what I mean so I want to show you the chart apologies I have some sinus thingy going on now <laughs> so uh it's causing me a little discomfort and a little bit of uh, coughing and sniffling so I apologize if that's going on during the video. So here's the chart for this week, for today specifically, this chart. But um, I want to draw your attention right here to Scorpio. Okay, that's where Scorpio is in this chart, um, which is using the natural house system. Um, which means that, you know, all the, all the signs are falling in their natural home. So Aries is naturally at home in the first house and Scorpio up here is naturally at home in the eighth house, right? So here's Scorpio and this is all the stuff that's going on in Scorpio. <laughs> you can see Mercury has just moved in there and the moon is in Scorpio today as well. And Venus is in Scorpio. And she's retrograde. You can see that little sign there. That means that she's retrograde. And Jupiter is still in Scorpio for the next little while too. And, um, you know, we just had that new moon in Libra when the moon was, came and met the sun in Libra. The sun is still in Libra. And so is um, asteroid Ceres in Libra there. So a couple of other things I'm going to touch on briefly in the video are, I'm going to mention Uranus being opposite Mercury and the Sun here squaring Pluto in Capricorn because that's going on this week as well. So, but largely I'm going to speak to all of this action going on up here in Scorpio. Okay, um, and Venus retrograde. So, Right now we have um, the moon in Scorpio, right? Which I which I just mentioned to you. It just finished up that full, that uh, new moon in Libra, and we have the moon in Scorpio. Later on, um, it's going to enter Sagittarius on Friday, 
and Capricorn Sunday, and then Aquarius next Wednesday. But all of that other energy is in Scorpio for a little while still. We just finished the new moon in Libra, like I said, and the sun is still in Libra, right? Um, and Mercury just moved out of Libra. And so Lib that Libra energy in combination with the Scorpio, all the Scorpio energy that's happening, it's, it's like this interplay between the rational, right, Libra, and the emotional. Um, Scorpio, it's about the surface and the depths. It's moderation versus, you know, being all in kind of thing. It's about um, lightness versus intensity. And, you know, navigating these waters right now requires us to be very mindful very aware, very conscious, right? And so so just having the awareness, just you coming here and watching this video about this um, allows you some insight that most people, you know, most people don't have. They don't kind of um, stop to think about these things or they, it, you know, it. this helps you understand what's going on in your own life and in the world around you and um you know wow goodness knows we could use a little bit of uh, of help with that right now so and support right so that's kind of like the vibe that's going on for the next while and learning how to kind of uh, you know navigate that and Balance that. The sun is still in Libra, the sign of balance, right? Um, and I, I was talking yesterday, actually on a Facebook post. Um, and if you if you're not, if you haven't followed on Facebook, the links to Facebook and Instagram are below, so you can check that out if you want and, and go like the page. Um, but <clears throat> I was talking about this notion of justice and balance. Um, but how right now this is not about gaining balance by sort of glossing things over. It's not about gaining balance by being a people pleaser. Um, these are things that can be associated with Libra, right? Not about gaining balance by, um, not being willing to rock the boat. Um, so this isn't, this is about depth. It's not about superficiality, right? We have to really be willing to look at the shadow side of life right now, um, including, you know, our, in our own personal lives and obviously in the collective, right? And, um, So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about a couple of aspects that are happening over the next few days, and then I'm going to focus more on the Venus retrograde um, happening in Scorpio. So just looking at my notes over here, if you've never, if you've never been to the channel before and watched me do these videos, I, I have some notes written, so I'm just, uh, that's what I'm doing. If you see me look off to the side. So today... And for the next couple of days, we're under this energy of Mercury opposite Uranus, right? So I showed you that on the chart where Mercury is in Scorpio now and Uranus is in Taurus, both at the early degrees of Taurus, um, or sorry, of those signs. So Uranus is at like one degree Taurus and Mercury over the next few days will be traveling from like zero degrees to three degrees. So traveling, you know, exact opposite Uranus and Taurus and Uranus and Taurus er, Uranus and Mercury are the two planets of the mind so they're connected in a way but Mercury is about sort of the the lower mind um 
and Uranus is about the higher mind, right? So Mercury is like our individual con conscious and Uranus is like the collective consciousness um, and our ancestral consciousness kind of thing. So Uranus gathers information from everywhere, right? From the seen, from the unseen, from um, the conscious realms and the unconscious realms, from the past, from the present, from the future. Um, it has no real boundaries as far as that's concerned, right? It, as far as this sort of information gathering, that's simplifying, but, um, and so sort of the opposite side of the same coin is Mercury that gathers information more in our day-to-day, -day, more on the material earthly plane kind of thing. So, you know, I this is like our ideas, our, um, our intellectual academic kind of thinking, right? Um, like standard intelligence. Um, and, our, and it's about our day-to-day -day communications. So how we communicate on the day-to-day. And it's like Mercury gathers information by, you know, reading from books and articles on the internet and this kind of thing. Uranus is like flashes of insight that all of a sudden we have this awareness and it's like, where did that come from? Right? So these two things are opposite the sky, opposite in the sky right now. And with this happening, um, this can... It, it can bring about confrontations and disagreements, you know, but it can also, and, and it can also bring about like mental, mental sort of distraction, really busy mind, um, you know, anxiousness, that kind of thing, anxious thoughts, but it can also lead to major new insights and epiphanies kind of thing. Um, you know, your usual way of thinking may be challenged by something or someone you encounter. And it's a perfect opportunity to pay attention to that and to perhaps have, you know, a mind expanding experience over since last night and today, this has happened to me a few times already where I've had these aha moments or, you know, I've been reading something, um, or just sort of thinking about something and I'll, I'll have this flash of, wow, you know, I never thought of that before, or some new information is, is revealed and uh, has allowed me to um, go deeper or look at things from a different perspective. So this can happen. Um, you know, hopefully that's the way it plays out for you. But again, being aware and having that consciousness and being mindful about it can make all the difference, right? It's how we choose to respond to the energy. That's the thing. So also today, um, and again, this will play out over the next couple of days, right? Venus is in Scorpio and it's squaring Mars in Aquarius. So it's making a 90 degree angle. So, um, you know, very, very simply, very simply put, Venus is you know, a feminine energy, Mars is a masculine energy, right? So this, this can be about our relationships and how, um, like it can bring more, you know, more, more passion kind of thing to well-established or stable relationships, or it can shake things up a bit and make, you know, there can be some hot-headedness and some, um, some tension, some conflict, that kind of thing. And uh, there can also be strong attractions happening under this influence, but not necessarily lasting ones, right? So that's also going on. And, um, you know, one of the things that I was going to mention to you, and I might as well do it now, is that we're in this period where we're doing... I, I One of the very first astrology readings I ever had from another astrologer um, many years ago, he said to me, you're here to do a PhD in relationships. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a big part of the reason I'm here, definitely. But um, this is kind of like a period where 
we are all doing a PhD in relationships right now um, with the Libra Scorpio energy going on, right? And, um, and so that Mars square Uranus is, is one piece of the puzzle, um, as is Venus retrograde in Scorpio. Um, and so, so that's happening. And then Thursday and Friday, we all, we have another square, which is the sun in Libra, um, squaring Pluto in Capricorn. Again, that's more, that's more of this energy. That's more of this Libra Scorpio energy. The sun's in Libra. Um, the sign of relationships, right? And Pluto, the ruler of Scorpio, is in Capricorn. So we may feel around this time this sort of deep, intense need to be in control of things, right? And that's that's sort of stemming from our unconscious fears. Um, and and past woundings and trauma that we, we, we may just want to like, mm, not look at may, may just want to keep that down there. Right. And, but at this time, those things might bubble up to the surface to be, um, to be faced. And this is really allowing us an opportunity to, to face those things and become aware of them. Right. And bring them to our, Our, our conscious mind and conscious awareness. Um, so, you know, this Mar this um, Sun square Pluto, it can be a bit of a crisis point um, because, and that's particularly, again, it's how we choose to respond, right? If we don't want to go there, if we don't want to look at what comes up for us, then that's when things tend to manifest in uh, more of, you know, a crisis kind of situation. Um, but when we make a conscious choice to deal with our any sort of past wounding or unconscious fears, that kind of thing um, that come up for us, right? Then we gain this inner sense of power and control, which is really ultimately what we're we're kind of seeking is we don't want to be out of control. We want to be in control. But when that power and control comes from an internal sense when we're aligned when we're in integrity um you know when we're balanced internally when those two sides of us the masculine and the feminine are equally balanced as you hear me talking about a lot then that's actual true power not the kind of power that um some of us seek in terms of looking for you know fame and fortune and notoriety and um social standing and, and money and, and, you know, prestige and authority and all those things, right? That's not true power. So just keeping an eye on the time here. All right. So those things are happening. And really, I think they're all playing into this bigger theme that is, um, going on with the Libra Scorpio energies and ultimately, um, this Venus retrograde, which I'm going to talk more about now. So Venus officially went retrograde at about 10 degrees of Scorpio on October 5th. So last week. So, um, you know, if you know your chart, look to see where 10 degrees of Scorpio falls for you and you can see where this happened. But as I, um, you know, closer to the end of the video, I'm going to go through each of the signs and let you know where this is happening for you um, in your chart, right? Based on rising sign. But if you want a specific look at your own personal soul blueprint, which is what a birth chart is, um, and you want to do some deep diving there, um, that's what I really love to do. When I look at somebody's birth chart, I, I do sort of these um, basic taste of astrology readings, which gives you a good foundation. And then I do more in-depth readings as well. And so um, if you're interested in that, you can check that out on my website. You just click the link below. But um, anyways, so I, I'm going to let you know where this Venus retrograde is happening for you in your chart and all this other Scorpio energy in general, right? 
like I showed you with Mercury there, um, with the moon currently there, but moving on. And then eventually near the end of the month uh, of October, um, the sun is moving into Scorpio as well, right? And we have Jupiter that's been there for quite a while and will be finishing up its, its tour through Scorpio. And oftentimes what happens when a planet is nearing the end of its transit through a sign, it can sort of um, be the last hurrah, right? And it can go out with a bang. And so um, that may be happening as well over the next little while, right? More, more Scorpio um, focus kind of thing going on in our, in our lives and in the collective as well. So when I was looking at Venus retrograde through Scorpio, um, a lot of what I was uh, reading or what I'm, I guess what I'm sort of drawn to more and more lately is about the mythology, right? And um, so essentially there are myths in all kinds of cultures that speak to this journey of Venus going retrograde, which is basically um, Venus, the god of beauty and love and um, values and worth and all of this, moving into the underworld. So uh, she's journeying through the underworld while she goes retrograde. And um, while she does that, in Scorpio in particular, all kinds of things are being stirred up, right? And uncovered and unearthed and, and dug up. And, um, you know, the skeletons are, are being hauled out to, to be faced and all of that stuff. When you think of Venus as being reflective of the, the divine feminine energy, this is like looking at the divine feminine as a whole, right? Not just the beautiful side of things, um, which is what we normally associate Venus with, but it's the whole picture. It's the feminine as her whole self. So, um, you know, looking at the the trauma and the anger and the rage and the you know, um, the depths really going into the depths and seeing the, the, the other side, right. Of the, of the feminine, not just what we normally associate with, um, when we think of, of feminine qualities. And so, um, I just wanted to, to, um, relay this Thing I was reading in Joseph Campbell in a book uh, that Joseph Campbell it was it's actually an interview based on an interview series that you can watch on Netflix um, it's an old series from the 80s with Joseph Campbell um, who was interviewed by Bill Moyer and it's really cool um, anyway and he talks Joseph Campbell as an expert on mythology right or he he was and so he says that myths are clues to the spiritual potentialities of human life Myths are clues, right? And so if we pay attention to the myths or if we learn about the myths, we, we don't take those literally, right? They're, 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 they're metaphors. And so this can be really helpful um, for us in navigating our world and our lives. And we don't tend to do that anymore, right? We don't really look at those myths or those myths ha haven't been updated. And Joseph Campbell was talking a lot about this in the, in the most recent episode that I watched. But um, so myths are clues to the spiritual potentialities of the human life. And when we look at the myths surrounding Venus or Venus type goddesses 
in other cultures because sort of many cultures have a version of Venus, right? And a version of this story of her traveling into the underworld. Um, you know, there's the story of Persephone in Greek mythology who travels into the underworld. There's um, Inanna and Arishkagal in, uh, to the ancient Sumerians, right? And there's just, there's a similar version of the story in many, many cultures. And so basically what happens in, the, in this story is that the goddess, whoever she may be, depending on the, the cultural mythology, um, goes into the underworld. And it's not fun times, <laughs> you know? And I really encourage you to explore th these myths on your own. But uh, basically, you know, she goes there and sometimes is forced to go there, right? Um, and I see that as, you know, when the, when the divine feminine is forced to look at the darkness or forced um, to see the darker side of life kind of thing, right? To go into the depths because something has happened um, that has kind of shoved her there or pushed her there. Um, in the myth of Persephone, Hades drags her down into the underworld. Um, and so, you know, this can be sort of like an experience we have with a major trauma or a dark night of the soul that drags us into the depths, right? And when we're there, we get to see, like, it's not fun times, but we get to witness the mysteries and we get to, um, you know, we encounter things that we never would have encountered on the surface if we just lived life on the surface all the time right so hidden knowledge and we discover hidden strength and power and resilience and all of those things and we may get in touch with our vulnerability as well um and then, you know, facing, like, facing that level of darkness, going into the underworld, this allows us to bring back all those hidden treasures and those superpowers um, when we return to the light. And so, um, you know, that's the those myths are a metaphor for that journey that we all take sometimes. And that journey that as a collective, the divine feminine is, is clearly undertaking right now. And, um, so, you know, this is being highlighted for all of us, um, as Venus has this retrograde journey into the underworld. And, As I mentioned to you already, you know, this is like we're all in the midst of doing a PhD in relationship right now, right? And if you've watched me before, you've heard me say, when I'm talking about relationship, I'm not necessarily talking about that on just the way that we always think of it in terms of, you know, your significant other or, you know, love relationships, um, that kind of thing. Yes, it's that, but it's not that superficial either. We are in relationship all the time to other people, yes, but also to ourselves and also um, to the world around us, right? And so by the end of this Venus retrograde, we will, especially if you... You're willing to do the work and to look at the darker side and um, to haul the skeletons out of the closet and have the tough conversations and, you know, witness your own inner 
wounding and, and, and all of that, um, then by the end of it, you kind of, you'll have a better sense of who's on your team, right? And um, including you, are you on your team? Do you know what I mean by that? Um, are you being your own best friend? Are you loving yourself? Are you valuing, valuing yourself? Um, you know, Venus is, is also about self-worth, right? And so investigating these themes, because when Venus goes retrograde, it's about that deep investigation, turning inward when any planet goes retrograde. It's a turning inward of those themes, right? So are, are you willing to investigate that? Um, you know, but you'll know who's, who's sort of on your team, um, part of your tribe, and who are you maybe ready to say, you know, this situation, we're not on the same page here. We've, we've done our best. And it, that's important. It's not a good time to just, uh, you know, have this Mars square Venus have us um, all hot headed and just say, that's it. You know, obviously there does come a time and place in certain situations where that's a good thing to say, that's it. Enough is enough, right? Depending on what situation we're in. But, um, you know, if it's just a matter of some things that need to be worked out, some tough conversations that need to be had, then it's a good time to do that right now, right? And at the end of it, maybe there'll be this sort of recommitment and this increased depth um, in certain relationships in your life. And then others may be time to, um, to move on. And, you know, this is a time, like I said, is a time of sort of stepping back or, or going inward and getting that perspective on things. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else I want to say specifically. I mentioned, so it officially went retrograde on uh, the 5th and then it's going to move back into Libra on Halloween on October 31st on uh, Samhain. And then we'll go direct on November 16th when it will be in Libra, but then move forward into Scorpio again. And so, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about that move into Libra at a later date. But I think what I'll do now is before we run out of time here is I'll go through each of the signs and give you an idea of the area of life that this energy is playing out for you. This specifically this Venus retrograde. Um, and this, like in whatever area of life or your chart, Scorpio sits for you. That is where a lot of transformation, right? Scorpio is associated with transformation. Think of the Phoenix rising from the ashes. Um, a lot of transformation, a lot of deep work is going on. And again, it's all about how we choose to deal and how we choose to face it. If we let, if we try to, you know, keep burying things and, and hiding things and covering them up and um, trying to abuse power, these are all scorpionic themes as well, um, you know, we're not really dealing with our stuff, right? This is not really the work that needs to be done right now. Although if that's how people choose to do, deal with it, that's their call. Just know that um, eventually it'll come around again for you to have to deal with. Um, that's that's the way it works, right? That's karma. That's that's the nature of, of cycles and, and all of that. So, so why not, you know, why not commit to, to doing the work? And, uh, and you've heard me say in the last couple of videos, again, another Joseph Campbell quote, you know, this is about going in the cave we fear to enter, right? He says, the cave we fear to enter holds the treasure we seek. And so if we're willing to make this journey into the underworld, 
we can come out um, a force to be reckoned with, right? With our superpowers. So Venus retrograde and all this Scorpio energy through the signs. Scorpio is about intensity, right? So this is where intensity is, is, is likely happening for you. Scorpio, obviously, this is kind of about you, right? It's, um, this is happening in your first house, which is the house of self. It's how we project out there. It's our physical being as well. Physic our physical health, right? Um, our physical kind of vitality. And so it's who the world sees us as. So these, this area of life is where this Venus retrograde is happening for you. Um, you're no stranger to the darkness, right? And the shadow. Um, and so perhaps this is something that you will be able to help the rest of us navigate. This is if, you know, you have Scorpio rising, um, Scorpio sun or Scorpio moon kind of thing in particular, or you have planets or points around uh, the 10 degree Scorpio mark kind of thing. So, so Scorpio, um, I'd be curious to know how this is playing out for you. I have a Scorpio moon um, in my house of communication. So just for example, I am, you may have noticed <laughs> if you watch these videos, getting a little more vocal about, um, about things, right? And going to the depths a little bit more in these videos. And um, that's just sort of one small way that this is playing out for me personally. So moving on to Libra. Libra, this is happening in your second house um, of your values and your self-worth. And um, your how you use your skills and talents to sustain yourself and make, you know, support yourself in life. It's about your resources in general. And um, so these themes are playing out specifically in this life area for you, um, Libra. And so um, maybe there is, you know, potentially some really deep work going on in terms of how you value yourself, right? And um, your what you value in general, what's important to you, what do you really value in life, right? And your relationship with resources in general may be transforming. Okay, Leo, this is happening in your fourth house. Um, of your home and your family and your ancestry and your roots um, and your emotional security needs. And so there may be some deep transformation going on and a real going into the depths here in terms of that area of life, right? Um, Maybe some even difficult conversations with family members are being had over this time. Um, that's just one potential way that this could this could play out for you. I'm not going to spend too much time on each sign here just because, you know, I've given you the overall theme. And so I'm just going to touch on the life area that you can relate those to. Um, so moving on to cancer, this is happening in your fifth house, cancer. cancer this is um, stirring up some stuff in the area of life that has to do with children, your children, uh, children you're associated with, 
your creative self-expression. So it could be, you know, your relationship to your creativity. Um, Venus retrograde can be a very creative time, actually. Very powerfully creative time. Um, and also to, you know, sort of your... Uh, the fun things in life and your, your, your romantic partnerships, um, as well. And so these areas are, are up for this, you know, looking at them through the magnifying glass, right? And, um, you're doing your sort of PhD in relationship in this area of life right now. Gemini, this is happening in your sixth house of your daily grind and how you are in service to others and issues and routines surrounding health and wellness and perhaps relationships, you know, that are somehow connected to those life themes as well. And so this is where Scorpio is asking you uh, uh, to dig deep here in this area of life right now. And to really take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, and how that area of life can be transformed. So that you are more empowered in that area of life, right? Okay, Taurus, this is happening in your seventh house of your one-on-one -on -one partnerships and relationships. And so you kind of have this double hit of, uh, of Libra, right? And this focus on relationship. And so there's this real intensity going on in your one-to-one -one relationship zone for you right now. And that can be um, marriage partners or business partners or any one-to-one -one sort of relationships that you have. Aries, this is happening in your eighth house. Um, this is about those sort of more intimate connections we have um, to, you know, it's things like, you know, you enter into a partnership, like a marriage, and then suddenly you're, you know, you have a mortgage with somebody, you have, um, you know, you're buying insurance with them, um, you do your taxes together, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, like a sexual relationship. So there's that kind of merging. It's about where we merge with, with another person and we have these shared resources. It's also about those things that we keep hidden and, and buried in our psyches, right? And so it's the natural home, home of Scorpio. So this stuff is getting stirred up good for you right now, Aries, in a big, in a big way. Um, Pisces, this is in your ninth house. Um, so taking a, a look at a, a really deep look at, um, things involving your philosophy and belief system and your, um, it, it has to do with teaching and learning and foreign cultures and travels. I'm going to give you an example. I'm a Pisces son, right? I am going on a trip in a couple of weeks um, to Boston, so travels foreign. I live in Canada, so I'm traveling to the U.S. Um, and going to Salem, right? And um, so that's really encompasses that energy. Um, so that just gives you an example of how that can play out. So Aquarius, this is happening in your 10th house of your career and um, your public reputation and your, um, your highest ambitions. And there can be a big, intense look going on at this area of life for you right now, right? And relationships, perhaps, in that arena are under the microscope right now of, of you know, the, the intense gaze of Scorpio kind of thing. Capricorn, this is happening in your 11th house of your association with groups, friendships, organizations, and also your visions for the, for the future, right? And so this area of life is under, um, under review right now, and any relationships that you have 
are under review in that area. And there might be some, you know, maybe tough conversations that have to happen um, in the arena of groups kind of thing. Um, and that's just one way that that could play out for you. But it's that area of life that's being impacted by these energies in this Venus retrograde. And last but not least, Sagittarius. This is happening in sort of that unseen way for you where there may be a lot going on internally right now that maybe the outside world is not aware of or you're not uh, showing or maybe you aren't even aware of. That can be the 12th house. It's those things we may not even be aware of. Um, they're buried so deep in our unconscious. It can also be our relationship to the spiritual realm um, or it can be how we sabotage ourselves and how we escape um, things that we don't really want to to look at right so that is uh, the area of life that this venus retrograde and all this scorpio energy is is happening for you sag so that's all the 12 signs and i'm going to um, say goodbye until next week and I hope that you find this helpful and I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below or reach out to me on Facebook, you know, Instagram, email, whatever, my website, all those links are below. And um, I hope you have a really good week. I know these are intense times, right? Hang in there. We got this. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.